Hey there, how you doing? So right now there seems to be so many people talking about the next decade, the next year. You know, it sort of struck me that, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, investing before the crash. And hence, I thought I would talk about the last decade, right? So we're gonna have this video talk about 2010, right? Start talking about 2010 through 2019 and kind of what we saw. Uh, before we get started, I don't know, I think it's fair to say that 2010 is the exact opposite of 2019. Uh, as you'll see in a minute, 2019 was pretty scary, right? If you remember back and you were even looking at real estate a little bit, you will realize that it was, it was scary. And lots of people you know, lots of people out there talking on YouTube have experience in real estate, but it's from 2015 forward, right? It's kind of the up cycle. There's a lot less people talking about, you know, what happened in real estate pre-2010, which is something we talk about on this channel, right? We've been doing this since 2003. So in this case, I feel like I'm in a unique position to go, hey, you know, what did we experience the last decade? So uh, let me bring it up and, and we will go from there. So if we think about 2010 through 2019, you know, we really need to realize, right, that 2010, most people were afraid or very afraid, right? I don't remember exactly when it happened, but we had money market accounts break the buck, meaning that if you put your money in there, you got less than a dollar back, right? For every dollar you put in, you had bank, you had billion dollar companies going out of business seemingly left and right. Uh, the financial world was in tatters. Uh, you know, I still remember the Fed and, and, you know, the treasury getting together going, you know, we don't know. You had Warren Buffett, you know, making some great declarations like this is the worst since the Great Depression. 2010 was very, very scary. And the reason I bring this up is because 2019 or 2020 is kind of the exact opposite. And I wonder if there's something in that that we should take away from, right? Does, does 2020 start at the peak and we plateau and trend down? Does it just keep racing higher? You know, what happens? But this is about 2010 through 2019. So in 2010, if you don't know, you should go back and look at the charts. You should go back and read some of the headlines. It was a very, 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 very scary time. Uh, traditional lending, something we had been banking on since we started, uh, you know, 800 credit scores, decent savings, decent income, turned off. Uh, we were literally laughed out of a Bank of America, uh, I believe, back in 2010 because we owned um, we owned a bunch of apartments, small apartments, but still apartments at this time. We didn't even have any housing because if you read our book, which we take great pain in documenting, we had 1031 out of the houses into apartment buildings, small apartments, right? Five to 20 units. And we were, we were doing okay. Uh, you know, sure, our net worth took a hit, but cash flow was fine. But still, as real estate investors, as someone whose net worth was tied up in real estate, no banks would lend to us. Uh, never missed a payment. Um, you know, credit scores were fine. Income was fine. Assets were fine. But still, uh, we were the enemy. And um, it was uncomfortable. I remember this like it was yesterday. Everything was on sale. I mean, the, the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service, Realtor.com, which is all I ever had access to, everything was on sale. I remember the capital letters. Any offer looked at, Submit today, please help. It was, um, you know, I wish I got paid for every capital letter I saw because it was, it was just a different time. And price drops were happening seemingly every other day as more and more inventory hit. It, it's the worst time on record to be a traditional seller, right? I would hate to have been a traditional seller in that market uh, because REOs were left and right, short sales were everywhere. But what happened is the buyers just disappeared, right? Again, we have experience from 2000 to 2000s 
and everybody was buying and suddenly everybody was gone. Right. I remember talking to escrow agents and real estate agents and where they used to have lists of hundreds of buyers, they could now count trusted buyers on two hands or less. It was odd. And we were scared too. I'm not here sitting here telling you like we wrote in the book, right? You got to get the book if you want to see what we did, but we, we didn't know. We knew our numbers. We looked at the market. We knew what rents were. But man, we had no idea how bad it would get. It got really, really bad. Like 2011, 12 was horrible, right? It was, you know, we, we bought a couple of houses. I, I remember buying one house for less than 30 grand. I think we paid 28,000 for a house on Pine. It was crazy. We paid less than 40,000 for five or six homes, I think. It was, it was bad. It was really, really scary. And, and again, we had no access. We just looked every day. We had the history because again, I, like I talk about in my course, you have to look every day to know when stuff goes on sale. And we, we, just, we, we had one thing that we wanted to never say is we wish we bought more. We thought this was our time to strike 2010, 11, 12. We didn't know though. Boy, it was a, it was a bet. It was a risk. But um, we were... Uh, we went all in and, you know, I remember getting a loan on my car. I remember not buying anything and selling things just to take an out loan on my 401k, man, we did everything we could to buy more. The other thing to realize, cause again, we had apartments now, right? We write in the book, we, we went and bought eight houses and then we 1031 into apartments. Um, we had about 80 units at this point, probably maybe 85, 88, something like that. And um, our rents were strong and occupancy was at a record. Right for those people that are talking about, hey, when when the economy gets bad, occupancy goes up. It did, occupancy went up. Rents were strong, right? In fact, in fact, our worst time to be landlords for rents was like 2006 and seven when anybody could get a loan. 2010, 11 when lending turned off, it was a great time to be a landlord, right? So rents and occupancies were really really strong. This is what we uncovered. We had no idea. We didn't know about private money. We had some friends and family that had money. They were so scared, right? They took it all out of the market. They were, you know, keeping it under the virtual mattress, which was a savings account or money market account. And when they heard we were willing to offer 10%, they were throwing money at us, not literally, but figuratively calling us all the time. Take it, take it, take it. Um, so that's what helped us grow. And again, you want to know the full story? get the book from Amazon, one rental at a time. It's almost got a hundred reviews. I can't believe it's been, it's been an honor to see all of those. Not all of them good. Some, some actually kind of nasty, but it's okay. Most people like it. Um, but again, people were uh, very excited to be a part of our private money. And we were very happy to pay friends and family 10% uh, during 2011, 12, 13. Funny thing happened after 2010 is the market kept getting worse and worse and worse. And we actually started buying apartment buildings that people lost, right? People were overpaying for apartments in 2006 and they lost them. We picked up 50, 50, more than 50 units of apartments directly from banks. And this is why I know that apartments are overpriced today because they were overpriced in 06 and it didn't happen until 2012. Right, so there was a six year lag. It will absolutely happen again. So maybe it's 2024, 2025. All these apartment buildings that are being overpriced with syndications and, and you know, limited partner money. Oh, I feel so bad for you guys. You're gonna lose your butt in most cases. And I saw this, I, we bought 50 units. Again, we only bought small stuff because it was just for us, right? A couple of 10s and 18s. Um, a couple of 18. So yeah, it was, it was a, it was a bad time. And again, we got, we got a couple, no money down, literally. Here's the mortgage, take the mortgage. Uh, one of them we had to escrow repair money, which was fine. The other one, they just, they just redid the loan and gave us a discount. It was crazy. So apartments will go on sale. It takes longer, right? Houses crashed first. Apartments crashed three or four years later. So it'll happen. I'm fairly confident of that. 2012, the market changed for houses. 
if you were in the market, again, we looked every day, all of a sudden we went from making 10 offers a week to zero. Uh, what had happened, and we didn't know it at the time, but the big hedge funds were buying stuff directly from Fannie and Freddie. They would just get uh, lists of thousands of houses and they'd write one check and they just bought them. Uh, so our ability to buy a couple a week with private money just disappeared. Uh, and, you know, the hedge funds, and the hedge funds are gargantuan today. They own thousands of units. Uh, and it's because they struck when the iron was hot. And they came out of nowhere. I didn't, I didn't know it was happening. All I could tell you, because I looked every day, was where'd they all go? Their REOs are gone. Everything is just a short sale because hedge funds didn't want to play with short sales. So we had to switch to short sales. It was crazy. Then 2013, 14, we started, to, the market turned around, hedge funds came in, right? The inventory snapped up. So we started focusing on all the units we'd bought. You know, we'd bought lots of units and uh, we just started improving them, right? It, where before maybe we did a very rental rehab just for speed. Now we were going in and replacing cabinets and bathrooms and, you know, that kind of stuff. We were really wanted to increase the quality of our units one at a time. Uh, so that's what we started doing in 13 and 14. Uh, and we, we, of course, bought a few, uh, but nothing like 2010, 11, 12. 2015 and 16, right? Markets rearing back now. This is, this is what makes me laugh a little bit. A lot of the people I watch on, on YouTube, they talk about, oh, I started in 15, 16 when they started buying. Well, that's cute. Uh, we were we were kind of done buying at that point, and we were repositioning our debt. Right, we were taking debt from property A, you know, doing a refi, and then paying off property B. So we were moving debt around, so we would be in a better financial position long term. Um, but it's cute when people talk about, hey, I've been doing this for five years, and um, you know, they, they've only known the up cycle. Right, if you've got to, if you don't have the scars from the last down cycle, it's. Um, I think it's going to be interesting when the market turns uh, and it will markets turn all the time. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in the next decade. 2017 was a big deal. Uh, we had not gotten a bank loan um, for nearly 10 years. Right? I think it was nine years and uh, we got one. We actually did a refi. We did eight of them. I think seven or eight might've been seven, might've been eight. Anyways, we did, uh, we did eight cash out refis. We laddered up our duplexes, triplexes, and quads, and we paid off a bunch of houses just so we can have flexibility. Um, heaven forbid something changes in the future. Uh, something we've seen, and again, we write about in our book, is we never took equity and we had a whole bunch of it and went on silly trips or bought cars or anything like that. Uh, we wanted to keep, keep the equity and keep the cash flow. Cash flow is what we talk about. So uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, so again, th getting a 30 year mortgage fixed, uh, was, was a good thing. You know, if you're just starting out, uh, you know, my, my mortgage rate has a six on it. Yours will have a three or a four. So consider me jealous. Something else happened in 2017. I blame Grant Cardone. Uh, I'm sure there's others out there, but syndicators started coming out. Everybody wants to raise money. Everybody wants to be bigger is better. Uh, it was, um, an interesting time to watch everybody start to do something. It felt like flipping back in 06, <coughs> where just everybody thinks it's easy. But gosh, you're taking on so much risk. You're investing other people's capital. And if you're doing skinnier and skinnier deals, man, it's going to end badly. And again, we bought apartments from people that lost them last time. So we know it'll happen. Maybe it's 2023, 24, something like that. Uh, but again, bigger is better and people were starting to overpay. Seemingly, um, cap rates were falling by a point, a quarter, seemingly. And, you know, your price per door was up 10 grand a door. It was, it was, it was crazy to watch. So, of course, if you know our story, right, again, get the book, read it. Um, when stuff gets overpriced like it did in 06, we're not against selling. Uh, so we sold some apartments. Uh, you know, we told you that 17 started to get a little pricey. So we took our worst performers and sold them and we sold them as is uh, a couple of them needed hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of immediate investment yet people overpaid, they bid up. And I, I just don't know how, I don't know how these are going to be profitable. And all of them were little syndications. And, um, 
I just don't know what's going to happen. So good luck. Again, 2018, something that happened is real estate's back. It's kind of like 2004, 2005, real estate's sexy again. Everybody's talking about being millionaires. Everybody's talking about the next deal, flashing checks. Uh, I still remember uh, there was a 24-year-old kid back in 05 in the Fresno Bee buying a $200,000 car from his flip profit. Let's just say that young man lost that car and all his houses when the crash came. If you are out flashing, you know, you're being fancy to quote Gary Vee, oh, the market will kick you in the butt. Uh, so don't do that. Again, 2019, right? We already told you we sold our worst performing apartments. We listed a couple of kind of medium performers for more than we thought they were worth. And again, they sold. Um, we have also closed deals this, uh, this year. We did several owner finance deals. We added nearly 20 units to our portfolio, uh, all via owner financing, which we deem to be uh, the way we want to go. Uh, it's just easier uh, for us. Uh, but again, we sold, uh, we sold at least one apartment this year uh, for more than I thought it was worth and was happy to do it. So as we head into 2020, I think it's going to be a great year. To quote Tom Ferry, I think it's going to be bananas. Uh, if you haven't watched that interview yet, do yourself a favor and watch it. He has a wealth of information and some outstanding stories. Uh, but lending is considerably easier than it was before, and I think it gets easier. Rates are low, and they're going to stay relatively low. Prices are high, and I think going to go up. Inventory is low, and I think going to go lower. There are lots and lots of new experts. The number of people I watch on YouTube that have less than five years experience scares me. I want to find the folks that have been doing this for 10 years plus, right? If you were investing in 2003 and four, you're going to get my attention because you remember the craziness that led up to the crash. You remember the crash. You survived the crash and you've been back. If you want to meet an investor who did all of that, Go to Amazon right now, link in the description, and just buy this book. Do yourself a favor. And if you like it, leave a five-star review. Those are always fun to read. And I still read them all. So thank you very much. So in the end, that's my thought on the last decade. Lots of people are talking about the next decade that don't have the experience of investing for the full decade. Let me know what you think. If you were investing back in 2010 or before, leave a comment below. Let me know, uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what, uh, what I missed, and I'd love to hear from you. If you're still watching, make sure you subscribe because we put out daily content. Take care.